There's less growing in our garden in mid to late January than at any other time of the year. But now, in early February, it's essentially early spring inside the hoopas and low tunnels, and I expect to see an explosion of growth in the upcoming weeks. In fact, that growth has already started. Today I'll talk about the factors that contribute to an explosion of growth in February in our Zone 5 garden, and I'll share some of what we're harvesting at this time of year. The first factor leading to increased growth is that our temperatures are gradually rising. Our average high increases from 32 degrees Fahrenheit in January to 36 in February, and our average low increases from 16 degrees to 19 degrees. Of course, this isn't warm enough to grow most plants, but that leads us to our second factor. Another factor leading to an explosion of growth in February is the two layers of cover here in Zone 5 create a microclimate with average temperatures like those in Zone 8. And there are many cool weather crops that can be started now in Zone 8. Another way to look at it is that we move the calendar forward a couple months, so it's really more like early spring here in the hoop house than it is midwinter. Without cover, we typically start planting cool weather crops outside in late March and April, but the higher temperatures and protection from the elements under double cover allow us to get started in February. This time lapse shows growth in our hoop house last year from February through March. Plants that were dormant in December and January start to grow, perennials emerge from their slumber, and seeds that we let fall in summer sprout and bring a new crop of volunteers. We'll also start direct sowing cool weather crops in February under double cover, including carrots, spinach, and lettuce. The third factor is critical. From mid-November through late January, we have less than 10 hours of daylight, which results in very little growth. But now in early February, we have more than 10 hours, and the daylight hours are increasing every day as the sun rises higher and higher in the sky. This is enough daylight to stimulate new growth in protected areas of the garden. Elliot Coleman calls the period when there's less than 10 hours of daylight the Persephone months. In Greek mythology, Persephone was the daughter of Zeus and the harvest goddess Demeter. Persephone was abducted into the underworld by Hades, and Zeus negotiated her release, but was tricked by Hades into agreeing that Persephone would return to the underworld every year during the winter months. Each year during Persephone's absence, Demeter made the earth barren until her return in the spring. Here in the Chicago area, the Persephone months start in November and end on January 31st, when daylight hours rise above 10. Now there's enough sunlight to warm the soil under cover to stimulate new growth. Even if you live in a warmer climate where cover isn't needed, growth is limited when there's less than 10 hours of daylight. If you'd like to learn when you have more than 10 hours of daylight where you live, please see the link to this tool in the description below. The fourth factor leading to an explosion of growth in February is related to the last one. As the sun rises higher and higher in the sky, the buildings, fences, and trees surrounding our garden will cast less of a shadow, and our garden beds will get more direct sun. As we get closer to the summer solstice, our hoop house and low tunnels are getting more sun every day. The low tunnels, which are south of the hoop house, were in the shade most of the day just six weeks ago. But by mid-February, they should get enough sun for us to start planting in them. To demonstrate changes in shading since the winter solstice, let's stop this February 2nd time lapse at 1 p.m. As you can see, the hoop house and this low tunnel are in full sun, and this low tunnel is only partially shaded. However, at the same time on December 22nd, this low tunnel was in total shade. Now let's resume the February 2nd time lapse until 2 p.m. At 2 p.m. on February 2nd, the hoop house and this low tunnel were still in full sun, and this low tunnel was mostly shaded, but still getting some sun. However, at 2 p.m. on December 22nd, both of the low tunnels were in total shade. The fact that the low tunnels are getting more direct sun every day makes them the perfect place for getting an early start on lettuce, spinach, carrots, and radishes, which we'll start planting in mid-February. So with gradually increasing temperatures, more than 10 hours of daylight, and less shade, We'll see an explosion of growth in February in covered areas of our garden. In the meantime, I'm happy to still be harvesting produce in midwinter. As we close, I'll show you what I'm harvesting for today's dinner. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.